Hi, Jivon. Thank you so much for joining me in this podcast episode. Really appreciate it, man. How are you today? My pleasure, Russell. Thanks for having me, man. I'm looking forward to today's conversation. Yeah, same here. I'm super excited to learn more about yourself and your journey as well. And we have an interesting topic in our hand as well, which is like an entrepreneurial mindset, which is really, really important. I think is 95% of creating a business. We need that because the mindset actually create the business, not actually like work and customer service or like creating a product that comes secondary but if you're not taking any action with your mind we wouldn't take any action physically as well so before that i'd love to know more about yourself your journey how did you become an entrepreneur yourself and how did you come to entrepreneurship world yeah i mean that is uh <laughs> it's a long journey but i'll i'll try to put it out there succinctly. So sure. my journey really started at the age of 17. Um, I was born in Rochester, New York, impoverished household. Um, really, my mom was wife two of two. We grew up in a polygamous household. Um, so there were some things there I had to learn. One, I had to learn value, right? value of myself because we didn't have money. And society tells you that you need money to be valuable. Right. So I didn't have that. So I had to figure that out Two, love. Right. I had to figure out what love looked like uh, because, you know, like I said, mom was wife two of two. So I said, is that love? Um, and do I love myself? Because we just didn't have the time. My mom was always working. She was always gone. So it was, you know, it was a lot to go through. Fast forward at the age of 17, I faced seven years in prison uh, for an assault and robbery charge. Uh, okay. And that was really when I identified value. Uh, my mom and my oldest sister came to visit me while I was in jail awaiting trial. And my mom put up the house. Now, this is the house that we all lived in, right? My mm. mom, my sisters, uh, my three sisters, and my, my brother and myself. So if anything went wrong, they could have been homeless and I would have still been stuck in jail. But it showed me that uh, money didn't matter. Right? There were so many other things that mattered. And one of those things was how we view ourselves, right? That's one part of the entrepreneurial mindset. How do you view yourself? Because if you don't feel like you are capable of performing whatever task you're looking to perform or hitting the goal you're looking to hit, one, you're not going to put in what you need to put in to make it happen. Two, you've already defeated yourself, right? Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, we have to be resilient. So that's when I learned that. Fast forward, I didn't have to do the seven years, by the grace of God, um, but I joined the military. And the military taught me another piece of the entrepreneurial mindset, which is leadership, right? Leadership and leading is not necessarily always being in front. It is really listening and understanding and being able to delegate and disseminate, right? So you got to be able to delegate tasks to get things done effectively, identify the strengths of your people, and you have to be able to disseminate information uh, easily for people to understand. Now, I'm not going to get all into it because we got a long conversation, but that's really how I learned entrepreneurship. Um, in in my in 2017, I was actually in Afghanistan when I formed my company, um, and I just realized that IT wasn't my thing. That was what I was doing. Um, it was really helping people and helping others achieve their goals, whether that's personal or professional. And that's when I started living my life. It's a great journey you had. So you, <laughs> your life and you experience hard way, like how entrepreneur mindset is important. You've been in the military, you've been in the prison, came out stronger, even better version of yourself. And uh, right now you mm -hmm. inspire other people with your journey and uh, teaching them. So how important do you think with your experience, like uh, we have to have like entrepreneurial mindset to have a successful business, personal life or professional life? Uh, it's, it's super important. I mean, there are so many roadblocks you run into as an entrepreneur uh, where you have to pivot or you have to go through, up, down, around that thing. So yeah. you have to have that resilience um, to be able to see that there are other options and it's not the end of you. It just may delay your journey a little bit. Mm, yeah. And I, I seen it myself, like it does, like I mentioned earlier, as all well, 95% of the time, it's like a man mental battle you're having with your own self. Like, what are you on a great successful business or have a successful relationship with your spouse, your family members? It's always the mindset and mm -hmm. that creates anxiety, that creates like a, being doubtful on yourself, low self esteem. Everything comes from the mind. And 
the mind is so much stronger. We always think like we can control our mind, but actually we don't. Most of the time we don't. Mm. And very few people in the world actually knows how to control their mind. That takes years of practice, meditation, and knowing yourself. So, and this is the thing is like, you you wake up in the morning and you feel like you're down. You're not feeling like 100% yourself, like you're doing or get things done, conquer the world. Uh, prior to the night you probably thought like tomorrow i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna change my old habits i'm gonna change my business how it was but when you actually wake up and you realize that mind is overcoming you like they're gonna become stronger than you so as an entrepreneur like what things we can do in terms of like we can be master of our own mind rather than a slave of our mind Absolutely. Uh, well, one, you know, I, I myself suffer from uh, depression and PTSD. Yeah. So some days are better than others, like we were talking about, and it gets really to extreme. So sometimes I wake up just like you said, like, oh, man, I don't have it, anything to give. Uh, but then it's really a decision. Yeah, right? it starts with a decision. You have to decide that you're going to win each day. Right. Whatever that looks like winning, right? If you're really, really, really down, hopefully you made a, a list of goals for the week and you prioritize them. So maybe you just do one thing that day. One thing is better than doing nothing, right? That one thing, if it's the key revenue generating activity, you get that out the way, you're moving your business forward either way, right? So we have to give ourselves grace and space, right, to have those days. But we also have to realize like, hey, especially if you're a personal brand, right? If it's just you or you're a solopreneur, you know, we have to realize that these are important things that's going to change your circumstances, right? It's changed no matter where you are in business, especially these times, like these uncertain economic times. This is where entrepreneurs are really tested, right? This is the times where we are really tested when it comes to tenacity, resilience, and how much we really want what we say we want. Right. Because people aren't buying like they want to buy. People are holding their money close to the best. And you have to do a little bit more than you thought you would have to do to for people to see you and for people to get your products and services. Absolutely. And so important, that though, isn't it? Like uh, you're going to be tested during the tough times like we've been like going through like a COVID and a lot of businesses have gone out of businesses. And uh, mm-hmm. some people, because of the mindset has been stronger, they found a way to start their business in a different way. Like it probably they used to be brick and mortar business. Right now they've gone to online. But a lot of people like they right. didn't have that kind of strong mindset. They probably got scared and they got paralyzed on themselves. They didn't take any action and they go out of business. And I've seen that like time to time, like a lot of family members' business gone busted because of the uh, like uh, the mindset. And a lot of people, like a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't invest time energy money or like a mentorship for like their own mindset be sorting out mm-hmm. so you you probably experienced that like in your business your personal life uh, sometimes like uh, things you desire to be happen or like uh, you predicted some kind of goal and you're trying to achieve that goal and you didn't didn't pan out like how you wanted probably in your business probably you had like x amount of revenue you need to generate x amount of client you want to work for 2022 and you probably didn't hit it or probably you hit it but i'm just giving you an example you probably didn't hit that right. uh, a lot of entrepreneurs who go through that and they realize like i'm a total failure my business is a failure i didn't go through that but that time most important part is a mindset so as you are an entrepreneur how did you do that like a kind of losses Absolutely. So I look at those shortcomings or failures, as we call them, as lessons. Like, what can I learn from that? How can it inform my future decision making? Like, for instance, if I launch a program and it falls on deaf ears, was my marketing good enough? You know, am I saying the right things? Um, Am I in the right platforms? Am I going at people the, the right way? Right. So I have to learn from that stuff. And that's how entrepreneurs have to look at it. Because you may think that it, your product or service is fantastic. And you may have even done a survey to ask a few people, but we have to realize that even our feedback loops are a subset of the greater good that we're trying to hit. So it may not work the way you work, uh, want it to work, but you have to learn and then iterate. Now, nothing we put out is going to be perfect. Right? This is why Apple is so amazing because every year they come up with the same phone, but they have one different thing. And what a lot of us entrepreneurs do is we try to push out all of the features and benefits that our program or service um, offers. No, find one differentiating factor and really, really hone in on that. Why does it make people's lives better? Right. For instance, Apple hones in on privacy. People want their privacy now because everything is always on. 
right? So privacy is a big selling point for Apple. Find your unique selling point, unique selling proposition that you can pitch and twist as if only you offer it, right? <laughs> and yeah. make sure it's something that aligns with your people. And that's how um, that resilience comes into play with entrepreneurs. It's like you always have to pivot and reinvent your company and yourself in different ways. And you and you learn a lot about yourself if you listen, if you pay attention to what's happening. You can learn a lot about you. Um, take some time to really introspect and see what about you has changed. Um, can you utilize that in your business, right? Uh, in your thought processes. And you mentioned mentorship. Always have some support. Don't do entrepreneurship alone. And that is the mindset that many of us really struggle with is I can't share my ideas. I can't I can't get help because someone's going to take my idea. Well, I'm be honest. I don't worry about that. Why? Because people can't implement the way you implement. And if you have the right people surrounding you, supporting you, they're going to get you a lot further and faster than you ever thought possible. Yeah, that, that is really, really important that you just mentioned. And mentorship is the key thing because when you feel like you're down, when you feel, feel like like you can't take it anymore, or like things not going to your way, you're going to be like in a proper uh, tunnel vision. Like you're only seeing like a one way. Mm-hmm. But there is there's so many other different ways you can take. Probably the marketing didn't work out. There is another method you can uh, choose from. There is another way you can look at yeah. the product or services probably you created. There is another five different ways that you can create and serve your client or customers. So like mentorship, that gives you like a different perspective, their own perspective, and mm-hmm. you can implement that rather than you be tunnel vision. So you also mentioned like you learned uh, entrepreneurial mindset and a leadership as well while you was in the military. Mm-hmm. So how does it actually important in our business or running a business or building a business as a leader? Like we tend to think about like a leaders only work in like a political world, but or like uh, playing some kind of sports, but not many people are thinking we need leaders in business to run successful business. And how do you create that kind of leaders? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, leadership ties into mindset too. Uh, And there's a difference between leadership and managing, right? So leaders really, they don't put people in position that they wouldn't be in themselves, right? They are willing to do what it takes uh, for one. People trust them because they know everything Thing they say they're going to do, or uh, they'll do, or if they mess up, they're going to own up, right? Um, and I think that that's one of the things that a lot of leaders lack is that accountability, that extreme ownership, as Jappa Willing calls it. It's uh, leadership is really about learning your people, you know, personally learning your people, their strengths, their weaknesses, um, you know, how you can leverage them, how you can become uh, work in a collaborative effort. Uh, and it's really about functioning properly, right? Not th- thinking that you have all the answers. You know, having the advisors, having people who really know, as they as Steve Jobs says, having people who are smarter than you performing the tasks you need to be done, right? Yeah. Um, and it's and it's really uh, an ever evolving process. Right? You don't just come in and say, "Hey, I'm a great leader," uh, just because you made one decision, right? It's an ever evolving thing, and you have to always have that the mindset of being open being curious, uh, learning constantly, because things change, right? One thing may have worked yesterday, it may not work today. So leaders always have to stay up on what's happening. They have to track the proper metrics and they have to lead with empathy. If you are not an empathetic leader, you will not last long today. Yeah, that, that is so, uh, super important. I nailed it on that. So yeah, like when I started my business, and uh, I used to think like it, we don't need like leaders in business world. Like you probably manage people and you be a boss, that kind of mindset. Then I followed like a few people for inf- influential people on online and just changed my mindset. Like we need to be leaders rather than like you manage the whole team, you guide them through, you need to learn the skill set. What do you want to do? Like a, my business is like in the marketing space. I was like, I need to be best marketer in my business then I can teach my team and guide them because obviously I can hire someone like they are super uh, clever than me and like they have a better skill set than me. At the same time, I need to know A to Z about my business. When something happens to me or my uh, employees not with me, then I can run the business and I can hire someone like probably uh, as a newbie and they can take over. So rather than like uh, 
I just manage them or like let them do whatever they want to do, like and knowing like what you can do and also like take the whole team with you. That's really, really important. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, like uh, since you've been starting your business in Afghanistan in 2017, what are the lessons you have learned? I know like you probably learned so many things, but what's the main one you have yeah. learned in the last uh, five years, uh, which can be benefited for my audience? Man, I think the number one lesson we have to learn is patience, right? Uh, we live in an instant gratification society, and we talked about it earlier. Some things may not go the way you want them to or feel like you need them to, but yeah. you have to be patient, you know, slow down. Like, really don't try to do everything at one time, right? Take down, prioritize what is important to you. Um, I have this thing called the five Y framework, and it ties into the, the number one lesson learned, which is patience where I walk my clients through finding the yardstick, what really matters, right? Yeah. What really matters to you, yield, what levers can you pull, right, to make that happen? What's Once you find out what's important, then you have yard. How can you make it easier to obtain that goal, right? How can you make the business work for you versus you working in the business? And then you have um, yeah, uh, year, which is people being your evangelists. Mm -hmm. People really talking about what your business does for them, being your brand ambassadors. And then you have yoga. You got to be flexible, right? That's where patience really, really comes in. You can't be so, so just stern that you aren't listening to what your audience is telling you. So be patient, be willing to try different things, be willing to test different uh, marketing strategies, you know, do some A-B testing. Maybe you just change the headline, see if it brings in more people. Maybe you have different groups in your email list and you have different subject lines, you know, just try different things out one at a time. Be patient until you craft it and get it as close to what is working for you as you can. That's great. Thank you so much, brother, for sharing that. So, Javon, like, what do you want to do in future? What's your big plans? Like, do you want to create impact in uh, people's life? What's your big plan? Well, knowing how the economy is at this time and maybe for a while, um, I created a, a low-cost membership program. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that membership program, I go live twice a week. I um, provide a ton of resources for personal and professional growth. And we just have guest speakers. We're doing a lot of different things. Uh, and we are doing uh, live and in-person events all around the country. Uh, we got, I'm from Houston or I live in Houston. So the first one would be in Houston, looking at the October time frame. So just providing ways where I can meet my target audience where they are and help people no matter what the price point is. That's great. Thank you so much for your time, brother. So we uh, end of this podcast. It's been a great pleasure having you. So those who are listening, if anyone wants to learn more about your program or yourself, where's the best place to find you? Sure. They can find me on social platforms, Live Not Loathe. Um, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, just look up Javon Wooden and I'll be right there. That's great, brother. Thank you so much for your time today. I wish you best of luck with your business and your personal life. And thanks for coming today. Thank you, Russell. Thanks for having me, man. I wish the same for you. Yeah, most welcome. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, liked our conversation. So if you want to reach out to Jibon, uh, visit his website. Also, you can find him on social media platforms. Until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.